welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa, and today I have an exciting recipe for us all today. I'm going to be showing you how I make my carbonara pasta. Basically, I'm going to be using bucatini pasta, but you can use spaghetti or even rigatoni like they use in Rome. Now, this is a Roman recipe, so it is very traditional. However, there are some substitutions you can make if you don't have certain ingredients. You will of course be needing salt and pepper. In Rome, they love their black pepper, so that is very important to make a carbonara. And you'll also be needing eggs. In my recipe, I have four eggs. I'm going to be using two whole eggs and two egg yolks. I also have pancetta. Now you can substitute this for classic bacon, but the Roman recipe actually calls for the use of guanciale, which basically comes from the cheek or the jowl. But I like to use pancetta because I feel like it is a little bit less fatty and it is more easily accessible. It's much easier to find pancetta than guanciale. And of course, also have a little bit of garlic. I'll probably be using maybe two to three cloves, we'll see. You can leave the cloves whole, but I like to mince them up in this recipe as well. Again, it is all preference, it is very flexible. Now you should use a nice hard cheese for this recipe. What I like to use is parmigiano reggiano. This is my favorite type of hard Italian cheese. You can of course use pecorino romano, which is very Roman but I prefer Parmigiano or Reggiano. It just gives it that nice buttery and nutty flavor and I think it goes really well with the creamy sauce. And of course, Italian olive oil. You'll be using two to three tablespoons or so in your pan. And now I already told you about the pasta, but I'm going to be using bucatini. Bucatini is very similar to a spaghetti, but it's a little bit more thick and it also has holes in the middle, which is where the name bucatini comes from. It basically means little holes. So if you don't want to use bucatini or you can't find them, you can use your classic spaghetti. That's fine as well. In Rome, they love to use the rigatone, which is this round cylinder shaped pasta with ridges in the middle. It's very good as well. But when I think carbonara, I like to twirl it with my fork and scoop up all that saucy goodness. Now, you can of course use a little bit of wine if you have it to deglaze your pan. You can even use some cream, but the thing with cream is that some Italians might frown down upon your recipe if you're using cream because they believe that the creaminess should come from the eggs, which is why instead of using cream, I just use those egg yolks, which help to make the pasta that much more creamy. I, of course, also have a big pot of boiling water on the go. I salted my water generously as well. And another important thing with this recipe that you might not see on the table just yet is going to be the water from the pasta. So you're gonna to wanna to hold at least maybe like a cup or even two cups of pasta water and set that aside. That's also going to help make the sauce nice and creamy. All of the starches from that pasta water will thick it up and make it very beautiful. I think I've talked a lot as it is, but this is everything you need to make a delicious carbonara. So let's get cooking. So I'm just taking that pancetta and I'm cutting it into little cube shapes. You can cut it as thick or as thin as you'd like. So what I basically have is one cup full of pancetta. Now set that aside for now. Now I'm going to begin cutting up my garlic. You just wanna smash it with the knife. I'm going to be using about two cloves. These are pretty decent sized cloves. If you have one huge clove, you can use that. If you have three or four baby ones, by all means. So let's mince up this garlic. Our hands are going to unfortunately be smelling like garlic for a good day or so, but that's okay. <laughs> If you love garlic, add more. If you don't like it, add less. It's up to you, really. So we're going to put the pan on about a medium heat. So I have the pancetta and the olive oil going right now. That was about a cup of pancetta to three tablespoons of olive oil. That's ready to go. And in about a couple minutes, I'm going to add the garlic. I like to add the garlic a little bit more towards the end. That way it doesn't burn. Okay, so like I said, this calls for two whole eggs and two egg yolks. So this is how I separate the whites from the yolk. Take that and throw in just the yolk. Okay, so now we can save the egg whites for another time. We won't be needing these two egg whites right now. But of course, we have the two eggs and the two egg yolks. And now with the eggs ready to go, I'm just gonna give them a quick scramble. Now I'm going to begin grating my Parmesan cheese. You don't have to grate this very fine. You can use the bigger one, that way you won't be here all day. <laughs> We're just gonna grate this up and this is gonna help make our sauce nice and thick and cheesy and delicious. <laughs> You might have someone stealing some cheese from you. <laughs> so now we have about one cup of Parmesan cheese and I'm going to be adding this to the egg mixture, which is of course just two eggs and two egg yolks. Adding that in and giving it a good mix. Now to this mixture, I'm going to be adding a touch of salt and a bit of pepper. You don't wanna to be too heavy handed with the salt just yet. If you need some more, you can add more. But again, the pancetta is salty and the Parmesan cheese is definitely salty, so not too much salt. And a couple shakes of black pepper, which is basically a Roman staple. They love to use their black pepper and I love it as well. 
And your mixture should look like this. So I have my bucatini here ready to go. This takes about seven minutes. Because I like my pasta to be more on the al dente side, in about five to six minutes, I'm just gonna quickly check on it and make sure that it is okay. If you want your pasta to be al dente, which basically means toothy so that it has a nice bite to it, we're gonna just take it off for one minute less than the cooking time says. So instead of seven minutes, it's going to be on there for six minutes. So I'm going to be adding in, instead of the whole 450 grams, I'm gonna be taking a little bit apart so I'm going to be basically adding about 300 to 350 grams of this bucatini. Now the pasta is almost done boiling and it has about two to three minutes left to cook. You're gonna be taking about a cup or two cups of pasta water and reserving that aside. So I have the mix ready. It is the eggs, the cheese, the salt, and the pepper. And I'm going to be adding that to the pasta. Now I have the pasta water set aside and I already drained the bucatini. So what I'm going to do is to the hot pan of pancetta and garlic and oil, I'm going to be adding my pasta, turning the heat off and then adding this this egg mixture. Now this egg mixture should coat that bucatini very nicely and that makes the basis of the creamy sauce. Now this is a very heavy pasta because of all the eggs and the cheese and the pancetta. So this recipe is good for about two to four people. It depends if you want seconds or who exactly you're feeding, but I think this is the most perfect amount. And of course, if you would like, you can also double this recipe if you're using it for more than four people. So let's get this plated up and let's take our first bite. This looks so creamy and delicious. Now let's grate some Parmigiano Reggiano on top as that nice finishing touch. I love Parmigiano. This is a staple in my house. <laughs> So this looks so delicious, this bucatini alla carbonara with pancetta, parmigiano. Oh, this looks so good. Just wanna make sure I get a bite of that pancetta in there as well. Oh, how good does this look? So let's try my first bite. Mmm, I didn't add any cream. Those extra yolks really help to make it so creamy and so delicious, oh my gosh. This is probably gonna be one of the best carbonadas you'll ever eat, I promise you. I've eaten this in Rome so many times. It is one of my favorite dishes, and guys, this is amazing. The creaminess of the egg yolks and that saltiness of the pancetta and the cheese. Guys, that beautiful black pepper. You have to make this recipe at home. If you do, please tag me using the hashtag La Dolce Lisa recipe. I would love to see your creations. I'm going to be linking the recipe in the description bar down below. If you want the more detailed recipe, I will also be doing a blog post at ladolcelisa.com. So check it out. You can always follow me on my Instagram page as well. That is also La Dolce Lisa. I'm going to be eating this because this is actually my lunch right now. My boyfriend's dying to try some. So I'm just going to be saying bye for now. And thank you so much for joining me. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I will be doing a lot more videos like this. If you love recipes, leave me a comment down below letting me know I'm doing a good job. And of course, request what you'd like to see. I can make almost every Italian dish. So please let me know, guys, what you're interested in as well. So thank you so much, and I'm going to be enjoying this carbonara. This is delicious, guys. Bye!